Welcome to tonight's bedtime story, a simple favor from a stranger. As you settle in, let this tale whisk you away to a world of unexpected journeys and timeless connections. If you enjoy our stories and wish to hear more, please subscribe to our channel. Now, let's begin our adventure into the night. On a crisp autumn evening, as the city lights flickered on and the last of the sunset faded into twilight, Thomas found his usual pace slow as he approached the park. It was part of his daily routine, a short walk through the greenery before heading to his apartment after a long day at the office. There, on his favorite park bench, under an old oak tree, sat the old man he had seen many times before. The man's presence was like a fixed point in Thomas's ever-changing world, always there, with a gentle smile and a nod for every passerby. Today, though, as Thomas walked by, the old man called out softly, Excuse me, young man, might I ask you for a simple favor? Thomas, curious and a bit taken aback by the unexpected request, stopped and faced him. Of course, sir. What do you need? The old man patted the bench beside him. Would you mind sitting with me for a while? I have a story to tell, and I fear it's a bit too long and a tad too heavy for me to carry alone. Intrigued, Thomas sat down, his interest piqued by the man's solemn tone and the promise of a story. The old man looked up at the sky, where the first stars began to twinkle, and began his tale. It started many years ago, he began his voice as crisp as the air around them. In a time when I was much younger, and perhaps a bit bolder, I found myself embroiled in an adventure that changed the course of my life. It all began with a simple favor, much like this one I'm asking of you, given to a stranger I met under very unusual circumstances. As the old man's story unfolded, Thomas found himself drawn into a world of distant places and daring exploits, a narrative woven with threads of loss, love, and redemption. As the park darkened and the night settled in, Thomas realized that this simple favor was not just about lending an ear, it was about sharing a burden too heavy for one soul to bear alone. As the old man's voice blended with the rustling leaves, his story transported Thomas from the quiet park to a bustling city across the ocean, years in the past. There I was, the old man continued, his eyes reflecting the glow of the park's lampposts, in a foreign land where every street corner presented a new mystery and every face told a story. He spoke of a young woman he met there, whose life was tangled in complications. Her name was Eliza, and she possessed a kind of quiet strength that was both enchanting and enigmatic. She was in trouble, pursued by shadows that neither of us fully understood at the time. One evening, much like the evening Thomas and the old man shared, Eliza had approached him. All she asked was a simple favor to deliver a small, unmarked envelope to an address she could not visit herself. Driven by an inexplicable urge to help, the old man had agreed, unaware of the envelope's contents or the weight of the task. The favor seemed simple enough, he explained, his voice dropping to a whisper as the story deepened. But as I later discovered, that envelope contained secrets that were more dangerous than I could ever have imagined. Secrets that someone was very determined to keep hidden. Thomas listened, captivated, as the old man described how this simple act set off a chain of events that pulled him deeper into Eliza's world. He found himself acting as her protector, her confidant, and eventually, her partner, in a desperate bid to untangle a web of deceit and betrayal that spanned across families and borders. The more we uncovered, the more perilous our situation became, the old man said, pausing to catch his breath. 
the weight of memories evident in his tired eyes. And yet, through it all, there was a bond forming between us, forged in the fires of our shared trials. Under the night sky, the old man's tale wove a spell around Thomas, who now saw the park bench not as a mere seat, but as a bridge to the poignant chapters of another's life. He realized that this simple favor of listening was not so simple after all. It was a passage into the heart of a stranger's profound journey. The park was silent except for the occasional rustle of leaves and the distant hum of the city. The old man leaned forward, his eyes alight with the vividness of his memories as he resumed his tale. After several weeks of dodging shadows and gathering clues, Eliza and I discovered that the secrets within that envelope were linked to a powerful family, a dynasty built on ruthless ambition and dark dealings. The information we held had the power to bring them down, or worse, provoke them to desperate acts. The tension between Eliza and the old man had grown during their clandestine adventure, evolving from mutual suspicion to a deep, unspoken trust. There were moments of fear, of course, he admitted, but also moments of incredible exhilaration. We were two strangers, bound by a conspiracy that could have swallowed us whole. One cold night, similar to the one they were sharing now, everything came to a head. The old man and Eliza were ambushed in an old warehouse where they had planned to meet a journalist who promised to help them expose the truth. It was a trap, the old man said, a note of regret threading through his voice. Eliza was captured, and I barely escaped with my life. Thomas sat, rapt, as the old man described his desperate efforts to find Eliza. He spoke of the sleepless nights spent scouring the city, the alliances he had to forge with unlikely allies, and the moral lines he crossed in his quest to save her. Each step took me deeper into a maze of moral ambiguity. I had started this journey to help a stranger with a simple favor, and now I was knee-deep in a battle that tested every fiber of my being. The story paused as the old man looked away, seemingly gathering strength to continue. In the end, it was Eliza herself who saved us. Even from captivity, she managed to send me clues, small, almost imperceptible hints that led me to her location. The rescue, as the old man described it, was nothing short of cinematic, a flurry of whispered plans, covert operations, and a final, breathless escape under the cover of darkness. We fled the city that night, leaving behind the twisted wreckage of secrets and lies. Our bond, sealed in adversity, became the cornerstone of a lasting friendship. As the old man's voice trailed off, Thomas felt a profound sense of connection to the story and its characters. The park around them felt smaller somehow, enclosed in the sphere of the story's gravity. He realized that this tale of danger and daring wasn't just a recounting of past events. It was a shared experience, a simple favor that bridged the gap between past and present, stranger and friend. The night deepened around them, the park enveloped in a serene silence punctuated only by the occasional call of a nightbird. Thomas and the old man sat in quiet companionship, the story nearing its close. As the dawn broke that morning, Eliza and I knew our lives would never be the same. The old man continued, his voice softer now, reflective. We had escaped with our lives, but the shadows of our adventure lingered. We parted ways shortly after knowing it was safer for both of us to disappear from the radar of those we had antagonized. He paused, looking up at the starlit sky as if he could see the passage of time written there. I returned to my old life, 
but it was as if I had lived an entire lifetime in those few weeks with Eliza. The ordinary had become extraordinary, and then it was ordinary again. Thomas listened, captivated by the transformation in the old man's narrative, the return to a life that could no longer fit him as it once had. What happened to Eliza? He asked, the question hanging between them like the echo of their conversation. The old man smiled, a wistful, knowing smile. Eliza continued her fight, in other ways, in other places. We kept in touch for a while through letters, always careful, always coded. But as the years passed, our communications faded. Yet I believe she is still out there, a beacon of resilience and defiance. He turned to Thomas, his eyes clear and earnest. And now, my young friend, you see why I needed to share this story. It was more than just a memory for me. It was a testament to the power of a simple favor, a reminder that sometimes helping a stranger can lead to unexpected journeys and transform your life in unimaginable ways. Thomas nodded, deeply moved. The simple favor of listening had indeed unraveled a tapestry rich with intrigue, danger, and the indomitable human spirit. Thank you for sharing this with me, he said sincerely. It's more than just a story, isn't it? It's a piece of your life. Yes, the old man agreed, standing up slowly from the bench as the first light of dawn began to touch the horizon. And by sharing it, I hope it becomes a part of yours too. Perhaps one day, you'll find yourself in a position to grant a simple favor to a stranger, and you'll remember tonight. They parted ways in the lightning park, the story complete, but its impact only just beginning to unfold. Thomas walked home, his mind alive with the possibilities of life's unexpected turns, the power of simple acts of kindness, and the profound connections that can spring from the most fleeting encounters. His steps were lighter, his heart fuller, and his world decidedly bigger than it had been just a few hours before.